Hey ladies, welcome. Um, I wanted to share with you um, in this video, really what the process is on an internal level to create an external transformation in your life. If you feel like you have a big life, like you want freedom, you want adventure, you want a lifestyle where you get to travel, where you feel like fun and joy and balance is a priority. Um, and you also have a big work, and whether that work is paid work or it is a passion that you have or a hobby or a way that you give back in the world, but there's this work, this purpose, this mission. If you have this desire for both of those things, this is the process really that I went through, that I teach my clients, of how do you integrate that and truly have it all as a powerful, feminine, aligned woman? I think that this is super important because I think as women, we have been told that the way that we source our fulfillment, our meaning, our enoughness, our happiness, our joy um, is through external validation. And what I know to be true is that that old way of sourcing our enoughness from the, the dopamine hits of external validation is finite. And so in that model, the old way of living is doing, 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 uh, over-functioning, over-striving, over-achieving, grinding, working harder, believing that if I don't do that, then I won't belong, be accepted, get promoted, have the money, success, lifestyle, whatever it is, partner. Like I have to keep working at it. And what happens is that's a never ending vicious cycle because the more we get and we don't get fulfilled or we don't get freedom or we don't get what we thought we were going to get from working harder, or getting that new job or starting that business or having kids or getting the partner, the more we fail at that, the old way says, keep going, but our nervous system starts to get fried. Our part of our brain, our amygdala has learned lessons in that model where we get more protected, more defensive, more guarded. And what happens is we start to actually shut down. Um, that big life, that big work that we want, we have to recover from it. And so then our opportunities for freedom and joy and fun end up looking like that. But I want to tell you the truth. And that is that you're just recovering in my own life. When I realized that my weekends or my holidays or my vacations were, recovery periods rather than moments of really truly being connected to myself and having fun and joy and freedom and all those things. It was like, I needed those things to like recover so that I could go back into my life. And the invitation really is, and I know this may sound crazy, but it's what I did. And it's what I do with my clients is that I wanted to have a life where my peak experiences, those holidays, those vacations, those times I was with my family, those times in nature, those places where I felt really connected and in flow, um, even in doing my work, right? Like it felt effortless and easy. And like, I loved every minute of it. I wanted that to have not my once in a while experience of life, but I wanted that to be the experience of my life. I wanted that that vision, like how could I wake up every day and feel that way? I wanted that for my life. And the question then becomes, how do we optimize that so that we can have that kind of success and that we define that success, not just like I've amassed a bunch of stuff or other people think I'm successful or I've been accepted or I belong, but really feeling a, a level of inner peace and fulfillment and meaning and joy that comes from doing what we're doing in a place that's so resonant with who we really are, that there's no more forcing and pushing. Um, 
And so in this new way of creating transformation, it's really this new era of what I call like a whole self approach to living a fully expressed life so that your soul, your essential self, like the, the meat and juice of what you really are, gets really just reflected outward into the day to day of your life. How does that all line up? And how do you do that in a way without like blowing your life up? Um, because we've all worked really hard to have the things that we have and we're all grown ups and we have responsibilities. Um, we have financial concerns. We have people we have to take care of. We can't just chuck it all and go hide out and live in a van in Maui. <laughs> um, by the way, that would be escaping, not creating, right? So if we don't want to escape our life and we want to keep the parts that we love, then how do we just optimize what we have and start to make small changes over time so that one day we wake up and we're like, oh my God, I can't believe this is my life, which after three years or so, um, even yeah, three, three and a half, four years, um, I would call it a, this phase of life design living in Colorado, having spent the first month of the year in Australia as part of an experiment, living in Europe and Portugal for a couple of months as, as more experimenting to now this experiment we're doing here in Colorado to where I wake up every day and I think, wow, this used to be like the thing I did to recover. And now this is what my life looks like, not just in my external, like where I live or how I spend my time, but even in my work that I'm now doing, which feels also that has been transformed um, because it's more aligned with the work that I really, really want to do, which is this work and moving away from just exclusively focusing on dating and relationships. What's I'm finding that's interesting is now I get to do everything. Um, so let's go over um, these steps. Um, and there are five pieces and I want to show you how they work. And then we're going to dive into um, the, the sort of questions that you're going to start to ask yourself. So make sure you stay till the end so that you can start to get an idea of what are the exact questions that you are going to start asking yourself and how you translate that into an external result. One thing that I want to say is that my whole career, I feel like I've been different because my job isn't to make you just feel better or have an aha. Um, it's how do you rewire your neural pathways, change your identity, and then create results from that place so that you wake up and your life literally looks different. And I used to say, you have that guy with you, or you have that career that you love, or you live in that place, or you have these amazing healed family relationships. So that's the goal. Okay. So let's talk about these steps and you've probably been looking at them as I've been talking, uh, cause I'm not a tech goddess yet. Uh, so I want to go over these steps. So now here's the thing. They're steps, but they're also very circular and they are iterative. And so in my next slide, I'm going to show you how they all fit together, but I want you to understand the process because I think as results oriented goal achieving like just tell me the answer give me a system ladies that i usually work with this is super helpful so the first thing is is that we have to really get clear on how do i retrieve how do i get connected to the essence of what i am and i call this your essential self some people would call it your soul um, some people will use the word your authentic self but I think about your essence as the part of you that's sort of like the engine for your authenticity. And the way that we do this and why it's important is because in order to design a life that feels resonant with what you are, we have to remove all the culturally instilled biases and shoulds and comparisons and stories we get told about what we can and can't do from our childhood. We have to like remove all of that and start with a blank canvas. And this is really, really powerful. And I think in my own journey of radical living, as I started to uncover and retrieve the pieces of my essential self, one of the most important pieces 
was my love of the outdoors. And what I realized is that there were a lot of misbeliefs and um, experiences that happened along the way that covered that up. Um, and in my book that I'm writing, because I was able to sort of like dive into my own misbeliefs and my own limitations, it became crystal clear um, as I did this process and wrote this book is that this like feeling connect, my essence feels at one being engaged in, in the outdoors in a very specific sort of way. Um, and I didn't, I'd lost that. I mean, I knew that it was fun and I knew I liked to hike and on all of these things. But when I retraced it back through the process, I was like, oh my God, that was a part of my essence of my soul that completely got lost along the way. So, so how do you retrieve your essence um, or rediscover or discover the first time? And that is that you have to surface what the real problems are at the unconscious level. In my old business, I used to call it finding the 10%. It's the unconscious 10% that has been so buried because it needed to be buried to keep you in the illusion of safety. So we have to do these processes and go through this work to really surface what is the essential problem. And then from that place, once we know that this 10% that you couldn't get in therapy or that you couldn't get from reading a book, or you couldn't get because you can't read the label from inside the jars, they say, and then you go through this very clear process of revealing that and releasing that at the neural level through experiences that actually rewire your brain. And then you have to replace those old ways of thinking with new skills, new behaviors, new habits. Right. And this is where strategy comes in. Right. And learning communication, how to have conversations, how to negotiate, how to inspire, how to be a better leader, um, how to how to replace the old way of responding to situations with new skills. And we call that rejuvenate. It's like it's like your cells. Right. They were rejuvenating them. We're having them. You're recreating new healthy cells. Right. Um, and you integrate that into your new way of being, and that starts to create a new identity, right? Where you're now living from your essence and you start to recognize what feels like right and what feels something is off. And we all do know that, we just have to uncover that. So that's really this, this starting place, right? And then the other thing that happens is number two, and that is you have to resource resiliency, right? You have to, start to form healthy attachment. What I mean by that is that your attachment to external validation is no longer the way that you resource and fill up your tank, right? Of your enoughness, of knowing that your essence is like exactly amazing. Um, and so we have to learn how to unarmor and let down our guards and do that in a way which we can feel safe because we can now self-soothe, we can set boundaries, we can meet our own needs, we start to build self-trust. Um, we know how to source our enoughness and our strength, not from pushing through, empowering through and surviving, but by being in tune with the energetic frequency of our essence, which is a high vibrational frequency that comes internally. We do that by creating found a foundation of stability within ourselves through stillness. It's a lot, right? But it's all part of the system. Okay. Number three, I'll call this the identity work. Um, and this is really important because as you start to strip away and retrieve your essence, there is an actual process that you go through, um, that's modeled off of, um, design thinking. Um, in which these experts at Stanford who do design thinking to create products, right? I, I adopted this model and it's really looking at, um, and it's from this life design work as well, um, which I did not invent, um, but have molded into this more spiritual work. And that is that, what is my essence? And I don't say who I am, who am I, but what am I? 
what am I at the core? Like the energy of what I am, my, my complete energy, right? What, what am I really? And really learning through specific activities, where in my life am I at high energetic engagement? Like I'm really engaged in high energetic flow and starting to look at our life from what we do and how we do it and the core motivation of why we do it and start to really understand this is what blows my hair back. That's how I describe this. Like, wow, this is me doing what is really me doing it in a way that feels really like aligned for me and my core motivations are totally aligned. Right? So we have to figure out our, what our, why we're doing it and our, how we do it through an experience of discovery over, uh, over a period of time where at the end of that, we're like, Whoa, this makes perfect sense now. And this is why I'm disengaged in this way at work. And this is why I don't feel really great with these friends. And my, my favorite example in doing this work for myself was it's so simple, but it was around cooking. Cause I love to cook, but I started to track this and I was like, Oh my God, there's certain times where I'm cooking and I just feel totally dissonant. It feels shitty. And I realized that cooking is the what, but the how is really important. So if I have a bunch of people over and they're all like in the, in the living room, like hanging out, having fun, and I'm just in the kitchen cooking by myself, feeling like I'm the mom or the servant, <laughs> right? I don't feel great about it. Um, or if I'm doing it because I feel like I have to, right? My core motivation isn't coming from connection or my passion for creation, which is what I love to do in cooking or creating a moment or uh, creating the actual art of cooking is creation. Um, and so when I'm isolating or I'm like, oh God, I have to make dinner, right? It doesn't feel resonant. Um, but when I have people around me and people are engaged and I'm having conversations and there's music, right? And everyone's just vibing, cooking is like super, super fun for me, right? That's just one example of an activity, the what I do, that we wanna look at how we do it and why we do it and make sure that it's aligned. Okay, so the next piece of this is becoming, right? So once we start to know this, we're like, okay, well, so then what is my vision? What is my ideal life? What are different plans that I could think about? Like, what would I like my life to look like in five years? What's, what's the plan I'm on? What's the like, no way, could never do that. Like radical, big, hairy, audacious goal plan. Um, what's the plan if, if suddenly I couldn't do what I wanted, what would I do? It's a very strategic way of thinking about all the options that forces you sort of outside your shoulds. And it pushes you to possibilities that are beyond your current consciousness. Um, and then from that place, really looking at how do I start to experiment and explore those, those different ideas through what we call experimentation. Um, and knowing that this whole process is iterative, it teaches us more about our essence. It teaches us more about what we like, what we don't like, what we want, what we don't want. And guess what? This is the juiciest part. Once we're in this engaged process, our life becomes a virtuous cycle, not a vicious cycle, because now we are just deepening more deeply, more deeply, more deeply, getting more attuned to what and who we are. Things start to feel more resonant. And guess what? It's super fun to create. Creation is one of the principles that allows us to look back in our life and say we had a meaningful, fulfilling life because we didn't stop creating creating new, new ways of thinking, creating new experiences, creating new breakthroughs. There's so many different ways of creation. And so this idea of becoming and optimizing and tapping into our potential and all of that, that is our capacity and optimizing. That's what we're doing now. We're optimizing our big work, our big life for success. And once we start doing that, it's really fun, right? Um, and in the challenges of this process, because we are resourcing internally and we change the way we approach our experience of life, there are less peaks and valleys. There's no need to recover. We're just like living our best life, really, even when things are kind of disorganized or uncertain or we don't have clarity. And that feels amazing. And then once you master this, you're sort of like a creator, right? Now you're constantly in creation of your life. 
you have new understandings of what you are. There are new levels and new experiences you want to invent and create. And you stay in action as you continue to work towards living a life that's a reflection of your unfolding essence. And the core of all of this is living courageously, right? Because without courage, we stay stagnant and we stay the same. And for me, I realized at like 54 that, or 55, that my mom died when she was 64. And I had this moment, which really led me to start this part of my journey of life, that if I only had nine years to live, would I want to live it in a way that was stagnant? kind of in my same house, in my same experience, going on vacations, kind of waiting for my kids to come back and just, you know, having these moments of recovery and fun, but like kind of just waiting. I felt like it was a waiting energy. And I knew then that underneath it, it was a hiding and an avoiding energy. And what was really going on was I was afraid of the next phase of my life. I was afraid of leaving behind one phase. I was afraid of aging. I was afraid of making a mistake. Uh, I was afraid of losing it all. I was attached to my house as my feeling of stability as what made me happy, right? So I was resourcing completely externally. And so it was in that moment where I knew that I had to practice what I pe preach. And that is that if I want to create this epic life, and I had been doing this work, so I had a vision of what an amazing resonant ideal life would look like. I knew that I was at a turning point and that even though I was at whatever stage I was in my life, it was the invitation, like the hero's journey, the call to adventure, uh, to really decide that I was willing to live courageously, to go through whatever challenges were required, right? Think of your favorite Star Wars movie or whatever, right? To overcome the, the obstacles. I was on the threshold, right? And that I was going to be courageous because it's one of the core values that I have and really go through this experience that I just shared with you. And there are all these different pieces here um, that are, and I will talk about those in later videos. Um, if there's something that you want to know more about, leave um, a comment and I'll talk about it in different videos. Um, I have a video up here already on this idea of the momentum tunnel, and that's the work of our identity. But if you have more questions about that, feel free to put them in the, in the comments. But but ultimately, at the heart of this is we have to make a decision to live courageously. We have to say, I'm ready to go on the journey, right? And once you go on the journey, right? Once you, once you cross that first threshold um, and you blow up the bridge behind you, as I like to say, um, this way of living your life, this framework um, is the the framework that supports you in finding meaning and joy in the creating of something different without having to blow up your whole life doing it. Um, so if this resonated for you, if you would like to learn more about this process, if this is something you'd like to explore in your own life, absolutely um, leave a comment or shoot me a DM on Facebook Messenger at Marnie Batista or an Instagram, Marnie Batista underscore. Um, and just know that if you feel that longing for something, but you can't put your finger on it, the steps are, and this is kind of what I had said I wanted you to think about, is to pay attention to that and to start asking yourself questions. Uh, what is it that I'm really afraid of. My favorite question is, what is it, and this will be your homework, what is it that I'm pretending not to know that I know and I am avoiding? What is the question that I'm pretending not to know that I know that I'm avoiding? So leave a comment, love your feedback, whatever it is that you do, don't forget, life check yourself and live courageously.